Welcome to this NPTEL course on modeling and simulation of dynamic systems. Uh, I am uh, Pushpraj Mani Pathak, uh, Associate Professor in Mechanical and Industrial Engineering Department and I will be taking this course for you. Now, uh, this uh, modeling and simulation, uh, this uh, course consists of many sub modules. So, briefly uh, initially I will explain you uh, what uh, the contents of uh, uh, these sub modules are going to be uh, and after that uh, uh, we will start with the first module. So, uh, the first module uh, is introduction to modeling and simulation. So, here basically uh, I would introduce to you uh, the course on modeling and the course on uh, uh, simulation. So, here uh, I will be introducing the uh, modeling to you, we will be seeing uh, the various examples of the model and uh, what are the uh, uh, or how the dynamic systems are modeled and uh, after uh, this modeling we will be looking at the uh, simulation and uh, uh, the MATLAB as a uh, simulation tool. The next uh, uh, module is on bond graph modeling of dynamic system. A uh, bond graph is a very powerful tool in system modeling. So, uh, we will be uh, taking up a uh, uh, few uh, lectures on uh, this uh, tool as such and I uh, will uh, be taking up various examples uh, on the modeling of the systems using bond graph. So, here here initially I will be uh, talking about uh, introducing to your topic on bond graph modeling, then I will uh, discuss the causality which is nothing but the cause and uh, effect relationship a very unique concept uh, which has been uh, inbid into the bond graphs and then I uh, will uh, be discussing how the system equations are generated from these bond graph and after this uh, basic introduction, we will be seeing how can we model a, a mechanical system and uh, an electrical system using bond graph. So, here we will be uh, looking at the modeling of these type of systems and derivation of the system equations using bond graph. Uh, next model is on basic system models. Here essentially we will be looking at the modeling of some of uh, the basic systems uh, uh, from the general modeling perspective of uh, and these systems uh, which we will be considering here are the mechanical systems, electrical systems, hydraulic systems, pneumatic systems and the thermal system. Uh, so, these systems will be uh, considered independently and the system equations uh, uh, or, equ or rather system equations will be uh, developed for these systems uh, independently. Uh, rather than what we can say that uh, here we will be uh, considering uh, some sort of the sub models or uh, the systems which could be the subsystems for uh, the um, uh, bigger system. Yeah. So, here comes the system model of combined systems. Now, whatever we have seen previously uh, uh, the basic mechanical, electrical, hydraulic or pneumatic systems, here we will try to combine some of those systems and we would like to see that how uh, the uh, modeling can be carried out uh, using combinations of those systems. So, before uh, this uh, introducing of this topic, uh, here I um, will be talking about uh, linearity and non-linearity is uh, in uh, uh, such systems and then we will see the various combinations as I just told you. Uh, these combinations could be rotary and translatory, com uh, rotary and translatory systems, then um, uh, 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 electromechanical systems. Uh, hydromechanical systems and uh, at the end of this sections we will be seeing that how can we develop uh, a model of robot uh, which is an example of uh, uh, a mechatronic system where we have uh, the um, uh, arms of the manipulator which is, uh, essentially uh, constitute the mechanical uh, system and we have the actuators and sensors which constitute the electrical systems. 
after uh, building up the model we would like to see the response of our models ok. So, here we will be uh, in this topic we will be looking at the dynamic response and the system transfer functions. Now, here uh, uh, our model could be uh, 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 a first order system, second order system. So, uh, uh, we will be uh, seeing the dynamic response of the first and second order systems and we will be looking at the what are the various performance measures uh, uh, for the second order system. Uh, uh, we will be deriving the we will be defining the system transfer functions and at the end we will be looking at the transfer functions of the first and second order system. So, uh, this is what we will be looking uh, in this model on dynamic response and system transfer function. Uh, then uh, there are various other tools uh, uh, for the system modeling and uh, these tools we will be looking at uh, such as the block diagram, signal flow diagram, uh, state space formulation and the frequency response. So, uh, the block diagram algebra we will be looking at uh, 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 one uh, uh, lecture uh, uh, I will be taking up on the block diagram algebra then uh, we will be seeing the signal uh, flow diagrams, signal flow graphs and how the state uh, variable formulations can be carried out we will be looking at the frequency response and the Bode plot as well. Then uh, after this modeling exercise uh, uh, we would like to go for the simulation and simulation applications. So, here I would like to introduce you the Simulink as a simulation tool which is a, a very popular tool and uh, uh, used by uh, uh, many academic uh, institutions, engineers, researchers uh, for simula uh, simulation purpose and after that I will be taking up some examples for these simulation problems and uh, say simulation of simple and compound pendulum. So, how uh, we can uh, study uh, the simple and compound pendulum, how uh, we can simulate uh, the system. So, that we will be looking at then simulation of say planar mechanisms, uh, 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 I can uh, or uh, I will be including say a planar robot I, if I want to simulate and see the behavior of robot that I can look at. Then we will also be looking at simulation of wheeled mobile robot and then uh, validation and verification of the simulation model. Because whatever we simulate uh, we need to verify uh, that whatever simulation results we are getting whether those simulation results are correct or not they are proper or not. So, this uh, 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 task we will be looking at and we will uh, looking at the various ways of validation and verification of these models. Uh, uh, at the last uh, uh, module uh, here we will be uh, uh, looking at some of the properties uh, of the systems. For example, the parameter uh, estimation of the system, how can we estimate the various parameters of the system, identification, system identification and the optimization. So, uh, uh, we will be looking at the various uh, parameter estimation methods parameter estimation examples we will take, system identifications uh, and uh, uh, a, a little introduction uh, of optimization method and optimization with modeling of engineering problem. So, uh, this is what uh, I have in store for you in our coming lectures. Okay. Now, uh, let us begin uh, the formal uh, course on this modeling and simulation. Now, see the modeling basically uh, refers to uh, uh, a, a development of a mathematical representation of a physical system. So, uh, suppose I have got a physical system and I want to see the behavior of the physical system. So, rather than making that physical system itself and uh, uh, make that physical system to operate and then look at the behavior of the physical system here what uh, rather we uh, engineers do is that we develop a mathematical representation of the physical system and then through that mathematical representation uh, we try to uh, 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 predict or through that mathematical formulation uh, uh, is further uh, 
uh, worked out uh, as uh, uh, we will be seeing that uh, uh, those mathematical formulation will be simulated to in order to determine the behavior of the system or to study the behavior of the system. So, the uh, simulation refers to procedure of solving equations that resulted from the model development. So, essentially first uh, we have a physical system okay, and for that physical system we represent a mathematical model of it this is what we call it as modeling and that uh, mathematical model or mathematical equations which results from the model development we try to simulate uh, uh, or we try to solve those equations and this is what we call it as the simulation. Uh, uh, Let us uh, take an example of a very large uh, physical system say a physical system of uh, uh, say uh, uh, distribution of electricity okay, uh, 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 in some city. Now, this physical system uh, consists of if we begin with say there is a, uh, a reservoir uh, which stores water okay, and from that reservoir uh, the water comes through a conduit, there are surge tanks in between and from the conduit water comes through penstock, uh, it goes to the turbine, turbine rotates the generator and generator develops the uh, uh, or generates the electricity and that electricity is supplied to the load center through uh, uh, transmission. Now, here you see that this system uh, entire system uh, is composed of many parts. Uh, okay. For example, we have uh, the system uh, uh, which consists of the hydraulic domain, then we have uh, 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 the system cons consisting of the mechanical domain say turbine system which is in the electrical domain generator and we have the transmission system and the load center. So, your system could be as huge as this one. Okay. Now, uh, if I want to do the modeling or I want a modeling exercise, then here what I have to do essentially is that I have to, in, uh, I have to draw, I have to uh, uh, derive the mathematical system equation for this whole system which will be of course uh, 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 having uh, 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 having uh, the behavior of the hydraulic mechanical electrical all the parts okay and uh, uh, the simulation my simulation aim could be uh, for example that for uh, a load of so many megawatts say what should be my uh, uh, water level required in my reservoir so this could be uh, my simulation objective now uh, as the course title suggests, uh, we will be talking about the modeling and simulation of dynamic systems. Now, these dynamic systems uh, could be as uh, I was just telling you in my previous slide that the system could be in any form of any any of the energy domains. So, our dynamic system could be either in the electrical energy domain or it could or rather what should I say it could be electrical an electrical system, it could be a mechanical system, it could be electromechanical system, it could be hydraulic system or it could be thermal system. There are numerous such type of uh, uh, examples of the dynamic systems are possible. I have uh, stated few say a moving car, it is a very good example of mechanical system. Uh, 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 electrical circuits, example of uh, uh, electrical system, then uh, we have the telescope uh, telescope positioning system. Of course, here you have uh, the combinations of mechanical and uh, electrical control systems. Now, uh, when we talk about a uh, dynamic system, there are various stages involved. Uh, in the design of dynamic system or you can say that there are various stages involved in the modeling and simulation activity altogether. Okay. So, uh, the, the things begins with the physical system. Okay. So, we uh, want to basically uh, simulate say a physical system. 
Now, the thing is that uh, uh, what here uh, is done is that uh, uh, we first of all create an engineering model of the physical system. Now, physical system may have many properties, uh, uh, the physical system may have many features, but we consider only properties or features which are of interest to us or the one which are going to affect the performance of the system. Okay? So, uh, engineering model rather what we can say that the physical system is simplified and converted into an engineering model. Now, we can uh, play with this engineering model, okay? we uh, do certain uh, analysis of this engineering model and this analysis uh, can be done using either block diagram method or it could be done using classical method or we can use the bond graph technique which I uh, uh, introduced you in the beginning and we will be talking of uh, taking up in our next module. So, I can use any of these three methods to analyze my engineering model. Now, once we have the uh, 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 equation, uh, once we analyze this engineering model, so what essentially outcome of that analysis is basically the differential equations. Okay? So, these differential equations essentially represents my uh, simplified form of my physical system or what I call it as the engineering system. Okay? So, these differential equations represent the behavior, uh, represent the behavior of the engineering system or rather represent the characteristic of the engineering uh, 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 model. Now, uh, if I want to see uh, the behavior of the system subjected to different uh, 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 boundary conditions, then I can go for the computer simulation. So, for computer simulation what essentially we do is that we do the numerical integration of these differential equations using various numerical integration techniques okay, and give the uh, initial uh, uh, boundary conditions and supply the parameters of the system and we carry out the computer simulation. So, this way uh, these uh, uh, this slides explains you in all the activities associated with any modeling and simulation uh, type of task. Let us take an example. Okay? Suppose uh, I have got a water tank okay? and I want so uh, to study the behavior of this physical system when say it is subjected to a very high wind. So, uh, let us assume that uh, this uh, physical system uh, that is the water tank is located uh, in a uh, area where uh, uh, the very high speed winds uh, do uh, uh, occur. So, uh, we want to study this physical system. So, now you can see that uh, this physical system uh, uh, is uh, uh, composed of a lumped mass, uh, say the mass of the water tank okay? and uh, 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 they, there are pillars and these pillars essentially behaves as uh, say uh, uh, spring. Okay? So, these behavior of these pillars are essentially uh, as a spring because whenever certain load comes, they try to uh, resist that load. Okay? And uh, uh, of course, if you are interested in finding out the uh, stiffness, in the simpler case, uh, we can uh, consider it as a cantilever beam, a cantilever beam type of uh, 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 um, uh, this, uh, element and we can find out the stiffness. So, what uh, altogether I want to say is that this is my physical system and I can uh, to uh, generate a mathematical model of this physical system, first I convert this physical system into an engineering model. Okay? So, for that conversion you can see that the lumped mass I am representing by a mass m, uh, the uh, pillar behavior I am representing by uh, stiffness and uh, whatever material damping is there uh, in the pillars, that material damping is represented by the uh, R element. Uh, the uh, damping. 
a damper. So, this physical system essentially reduces into an engineering model consisting of a spring mass and damper ok. And here say the excitation which is coming due to the wind that is represented by a force F t. Now, if you look at this engineering model uh, 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 you can recall uh, from your earlier studies that this is a model of simple spring mass damper system and for this simple spring mass damper system we can uh, 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 we can uh, draw the free body diagram of this system and we can derive the system equation which is nothing but uh, m d square x by d t square plus r d x by d t plus k x is equal to f t ok, where here uh, m is the uh, mass of the, uh, the bulk mass, uh, uh, x is the displacement of the mass, r is the damping coefficient of the damper, k is the stiffness of the spring and of course, f is the external force. So, here in all together what we have done is that we have rather represented this physical system by this differential equation ok. And now, uh, we can do the numerical integration of this differential equation ok and we can proceed for the simulation. Of course, uh, we will be discussing lot more about this simulation in our coming models. Let us take another example a simple car ok. So, this car is my physical system and I can uh, uh, convert this physical uh, model of the car into an engineering model ok. So, as you can see in this figure uh, sidewise uh, the front and uh, uh, rear suspension uh, I have uh, put into and uh, the, there is a car body having the car mass and the car uh, polar moment of inertia is here ok and here the uh, vertical uh, motion as well as the pitching of the car has been modeled ok. So, this way I can replace this physical system uh, uh, by the engineering model and then uh, uh, using any of the uh, uh, any of the uh, model reduction or uh, uh, modeling method I can get the mathematical expression for this model. Now, uh, before we proceed ahead let us have uh, uh, some concept of the systems ok, because we are uh, going to model the various systems. So, uh, let us have uh, some uh, basic concept of the system, uh, what do you mean by static system, what do you mean by dynamic systems ok. So, uh, the systems definition uh, if you look at uh, it is given as aggregation or assemblage of objects joined in some regular interaction or uh, interdependence ok. Uh, so, there are uh, uh, assemblies of the object which are joined together ok uh, with uh, regular interaction uh, or interdependence. Now, this type uh, this uh, uh, definition holds good uh, if your system is a static system, but as the uh, uh, the title of the course suggests the uh, course is on the dynamic system where rather we will be more interested into behavior looking at the behavior of the system with time ok. So, how the system behaves with time that will be the principal aim of our study. Uh, we can take an uh, example of the system as uh, say uh, simple aircraft flying under the control of autopilot. So, if I take uh, uh, this uh, system uh, then uh, here uh, uh, there could be the various uh, sub components of this system. For example, uh, 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 a desired heading is required uh, for the aircraft ok and uh, from the air uh, uh, air frame uh, uh, through gyroscope uh, uh, one can find out uh, the uh, actual heading of the aircraft and uh, we can get the error that is the desired uh, difference of the desired and actual heading. And of course, this uh, error can be uh, sent to the control surfaces 
uh, control surfaces and from the control surfaces of course, uh, uh, the air frame can be controlled and a desired heading can be obtained. Now, uh, before uh, we go further, let us uh, look at the various uh, 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 sub components or various distinct objects which I talked about uh, in my previous slide here. So, the system has certain distinct object each of which has properties of interest. Uh, there are interaction occurring in the system and that interaction actually causes the changes in the system object of interest in the system is what we call it as the entity and the properties of these entities are called attributes and the process that causes change in the system is what we call as the activity and description of entities, attributes and activities at the point of time is what is called as the state of the system. Now, progress of a system studies by observing the change in state of the system. So, how the system state changes uh, by studying that we can study the progress of the system. Now, in this example of the uh, autopilot control of the aircraft, uh, entities could be the airframe, the control surface and the gyroscope, attributes could be the speed, control surface angle. Uh, gyroscope setting, activities could be the driving of the control surface, response of the airframe to control surface movement. Uh, the these uh, surface, uh, these uh, control system always interacts with the environment. Okay, so the system environment is very important. Uh, uh, in order to understand or in, in order to have the uh, control uh, uh, system, uh, control functions to uh, work properly. Now, the changes occurring outside the system and that affecting the system are said to occur uh, in the system environment. Okay? Now, uh, these uh, 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 system environment could be uh, endogenous that is which describe activity occurring within the system or exogenous that is the activities in the environment that affect the system. Now, if there is no exogenous activity it is called a closed system and exogenous activity if they are present we call it as the open system. Now, if we know the system behavior or we, we can find out the system behavior completely, we call such type of systems are the as the deterministic system and where we are not sure about the system behavior, uh, the effect of activity vary randomly over the various possible outcomes, uh, these type of activities are called the uh, stochastic activities. Now, uh, next the system could be a continuous system or it could be discrete system. For example, the aircraft CPU scheduling model could be a, an example of continuous system or we can have the discrete system, uh, the, the system in which the changes are predominant, predominantly discontinuous such as factory number of students attending the classes. The system modeling uh, after studying these systems characteristic the system modeling uh, as I said uh, in the beginning of my this lecture, the aim of the system modeling is to uh, predict the behavior of the system. Okay. So, uh, this uh, modeling, uh, this study about system we can do in the system itself, okay. uh, uh, but uh, mostly the interest is to study the behavior before the system is built. Okay. So, for this system modeling, we actually create a model okay, uh, uh, which is nothing but a body of information about the system or representation of a system for the purpose of studying the system. Okay. And this model uh, building basically consists of two stages establishing the model structure and the supplying of the data. So, this is all about uh, the introduction to the modeling uh, uh, this uh, lecture today. Okay. Thank you.